So, um, it's been quite a week. Uh, and during the week, we had uh, Halloween. And at the week, this weekend now, we're starting to hear fireworks going off yeah. for bonfire night. And I just thought, instead of addressing any current news or affairs, I just wanted us to focus on what is taking place this week. Now, two weeks ago, I touched on um, the dark side of Halloween and what it really means. And I only really impacted on the surface, but it was enough to generate a lot of comments on um, YouTube. So I'd just like to go over a few more points that I didn't mention at the last time around just to conclude Halloween, but I would also like to spend some time with you, if Allah allows, that we uh, talk about bonfire night also. But before I do, I'd just like to quote a passage of scripture from the Bible, and in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 36, we read, He who that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Last week, we examined the move from daylight into darkness by way of British summertime into Greenwich Mean Time. We also referred to the satanic holiday called Halloween and the influence it now has on our everyday lives. Now, the Honourable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that history is best qualified to reward all research. Halloween is the New Year's Day equivalent of the satanic and paganistic world. It was originated by ancient Celtic Druids. On the night of Halloween, it is a night of worship to the satanic god named Salween. So while your children dress up and play in costumes at parties, trick and treating throughout their neighbourhoods, witches, pagans and satanists perform terrifying rituals to promote the celebration of death. Come on, brother. So now I just want to spend a little time on this trick and treat. Now at this time of the year, the ancient Druids believed that demonic spirits would get hungry by putting out food for these evil spirits or providing them shelter the people believed that they could appease these demons. Now, if the living did not provide any food or treats, the spirits would engage in trickery, and again, the people feared the terrible things that could await them if they didn't comply, if they didn't leave out any treats for these little demonic spirits. So food and treats were left out for demons on this night, and here you have the origin of trick or tree. Yes, so today now, many people are encouraging your children, as well as ourselves, into this demonic behaviour. And, and then we wonder why they are not turning out the way we want them to. Instead, our little angels that Allah wants us to bring up are instead being reared into little demons when we allow them to indulge in Halloween. What do our children become when we send them out to trick or treat? Are we, how can we rear children into individuals of character when we acti actively encourage them in demonic behaviour? Are we allowing Satan to come in between the parent and the child? There is nothing innocent or sacred about Halloween. And what's our responsibility? as parents. Parents who are believers have an enormous responsibility to tell the children that, to tell the school that your child is attending that you do not want them teaching your children or celebrating Halloween to your child whatsoever, especially if you're a Christian or a Muslim. When you encourage your Christian and or Muslim children to go out trick-or-treating, how do you know if the sweets that, they are, that they've collected are halal? Mm -hmm. Many sweets and confection are laced with pork gelatin. In fact, 
we should all be coming together as a community. We should be pooling our resources and setting up our own nurseries and schools and then control the curriculum and that way the agents of shaitan cannot poison the minds of our young people with satanism in the form of Halloween. Yes, sir. As parents, we have to boycott Halloween if we claim to be of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Do not buy any of the costumes or the paraphernalia. Do not allow your children to watch any of the horror films or television programs that promote Halloween. Mm -hmm. The devil is very, very wise indeed and he'll always be promoting his teachings as a bit of harmless fun. Yes, sir. And guess what? Some of us will fall for it. Yes, sir. As I said before, there's nothing righteous about Halloween whatsoever. All you have to do is look at the state of our community. We send our children to these nursery schools and primary schools which actively promote Halloween, as if it were a recognized religious holiday. Instead of challenging the school, many parents accept it as the norm, not realizing that their child is gradually being introduced and exposed to accepting Satanism. Those who allow their children to trick or treat have accepted devil worship into their family. So what are we going to do? Will we allow this to continue unchallenged? How long are you going to allow this practice to continue in your home. The action you decide to take today will determine the future path for you and your family. But, um, but in ending on the Halloween subject, I just want to go back to the scripture and quote in the book of 1 Corinthians verse 10, chapter 10, verse 21, it says, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. And in Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 we read that no man can serve two masters. And in the book of James it states, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Brothers and sisters, it's time to make up your minds. Yes, sir. What are you going to do for you and your family? Allah gives you a clear choice. You cannot afford to sit on the fence and none of us can have it both ways. Right. Which now brings me to bonfire night. <laughs> Okay, is everyone enjoying bonfire night? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, the, sir. The, the smoke, the fire. <laughs> okay, well, I just thought I'd delve a little into the history of bonfire night. And uh, we go back to our friends, the ancient Druids. Well, I say friends very loosely. Now, it was the ancient Druids who performed diabolical rituals involving human beings, horses, cattle and other livestock, right, that were all rounded up and forced into overcrowded cages called wicker cages. And then all of the people in the cages were burnt to death. This was done every year to appease the satanic gods. If you look it up on YouTube, just type in wicker man and you'll know what I'm talking about. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, there are several references in the books of Judges and Kings that I don't have time to go into today to the sun god named Baal, where his worshippers would give human beings, which included children, babies and livestock, a sacrifice to Baal. So this weekend, all over the world, many people will be lighting up their bonfires. Now, the origin of the word bonfire comes from two words bone fire which is which really is the remains of what's left after the bonfire ritual has ended yes, sir. so to obtain offerings for these bonfires these ancient druids visited people's homes demanding animals or humans to be made into sacrifices those who gave would be promised prosperity for the following year but those who didn't give were cursed threatened tormented and even terrorized 
by the priests themselves. Now, a giant effigy in the form of a wicker man would be constructed and all the living human beings and animals that the Druids had gathered up were imprisoned inside this wooden structure which would then be set alight, killing all who were imprisoned inside it to appease their gods. So it, could sh it should come as no surprise to you this week that on the news there was a massive 11 metre high effigy of Boris Johnson, our former <laughs> Foreign Secretary, that was unveiled by the Bonfire Society in Kent, South East England, and it was ready to be burnt at the forthcoming Bonfire Night celebration. Wow. Minus, I should add, the human beings um, and the livestock served up uh, as sacrifices to their gods. Now, don't be surprised if human sacrifices are still going on to this very day. Um, especially involving people who've gone missing, never to be seen again. Now, and I, I say that as a warning, not just to everyone here, but to those watching on YouTube, that we must all be vigilant in these very dark times indeed. And um, just my fine, on, on a final word, I just, if you will allow me, I'd just like to touch on fireworks night. Now, I don't have anything, any references from the Bible about fireworks night. However, I just wanted to bring this topic that I'm talking about up to date. Because on bonfire night, as we all know, uh, people let off fireworks. There were fireworks readily available throughout the community. There were a lot of firework displays, organized firework displays. Fireworks have been with us for a very long time. But every year in the UK, in late October, early November, any one of us above the age of 18, we can go into a high street retailer and buy fireworks, specifically for November the 5th or Diwali or maybe New Year's celebration. But just walk with me for a moment, all right? Help me, right? You and I, I want to deconstruct this firework, all right? So, with your minds, yeah? Now, a firework is shaped like a missile. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, a firework is a missile, yeah? A firework is a rocket, yeah? A firework is packed with gunpowder, yeah? A firework is an explosive device. A firework contains highly flammable material. Everyone with me so far? Yes, yeah? Yes, Praise be to Allah. Now, everyone knows what a firework can do when it's placed near to fire or very high temperatures. Now, right, but we also, so that's what a firework is, right? But a firework can also cause blindness. It can burn human tissue. A firework can kill. And if you have to have fireworks, I know people who have fireworks, but they don't use them wisely. Now, just think about what I've just said about the firework, yeah? Now, we're living in a time in the UK of a state of high alert, yeah? The security services are virtually on red alert all of the time, yeah? They're looking for terrorist threats, they're looking for potential threats coming from so-called terrorists. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope that the uh, security services, the police, special branch, and all the, the myriad of uh, acronyms are watching, because I've got a question for you. What's to stop um, a known terrorist from going into a high street retailer uh, and buying up some fireworks mm -hmm. and making an explosive device? Mm -hmm. Has it ever occurred to any of you that this could happen very easily. I just walked into a big uh, supermarket chain yesterday, who will remain nameless, and they had their display, fireworks. <laughs> so right now, I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm not promoting that any one of us should go in and buy any of these things, because certainly I don't want any repercussions coming back to me to say that, I, you know, oh, the Nation of Islam said this. Certainly not. But I'm just asking the question, in light of this heightened security and people's lives being on the line, 
has it ever occurred to the security services that perhaps, just perhaps, terrorists could get their hands on this material and construct something that could do, cause great damage to uh, citizens in the UK? Good question, Good question. My own, I mean, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, it was the IRA that were laying off bombs all over the UK um, in the 70s and the 80s. But fire, guess what? Fireworks were still on sale. People were still having firework displays, right? But given the clear and present danger of today, wouldn't it make sense that though only those qualified in the science of pyrotechnics should and should be the only ones to purchase and use fireworks for organized firework displays? I'm not a killjoy. Yeah, people like fireworks. I understand that. You know, we're not, we're not killjoys in the nation of Islam. But it, something like fireworks and gunpowder needs to be handled responsibly. With young children letting off bangers and goodness knows what, um, I'm just asking that each and every one of us just take extra care. And if you have to spend... Fireworks are very expensive. And when you think, you just add a match to one of these devices, that's all your money gone up in smoke. So, and, and it only lasts, what, a few seconds? So just think about, is that a worthy investment that we should be making in the black community? So I'll, I'll put it out there, and I'll, I'll, um, that's my message for the week about Halloween and Bonfire Night, and I leave you all in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wow.